Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a radical expression, an infinite radical expression. We have the square root of 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 8 times the square root of 16, so on and so forth. All of these are square roots and the numbers inside the radicals are all powers of 2. Provided that this expression converges, we're going to find the value to which it converges. So, first of all, I want you to notice that 2 is under 1 radical, 4 is under 2 radicals, 8 is under 3 ra radicals, a 16 is under 4 radicals, so on and so forth. So whatever the power of 2 is, that's how many radicals that power is under. So we can basically write this as follows. We have square root of 2, and then square root of 4 is going to be square root of twice, so it's square root of the square root of the square root of 4, and then times the square root of the square root of the square root of 8, and then it's going to be 4 times for the 16, and so on and so forth. And this is going to give us a pattern, which we're going to work out, and we're going to be using some uh, series here, and we're going to find the result. Okay, so the first one basically can be written as 2 to the power 1 half, which is the square root of 2 here. And the second one is the, the square root of the square root of something is basically it's something to the power 1 half to the power 1 half, which becomes the something to the power 1 fourth. So we can write this as 4 to the power 1 fourth, and then this can be written as 8 to the power 1 eighth, and then the next one is going to be 16 to the power 1 over 16. And it'll just continue. Okay, so you get the idea. We have a power of 2 in the base, and the exponent is just its reciprocal. So it's kind of like this. We have a product. We can use uh, write it uh, using the pi symbol, the multiplication symbol. And this kind of goes like k equals, I don't know, just maybe 1 to infinity. And the base is going to be 2 to the power k. You know, that is the base. And then that is raised to the power 1 over 2 to the power k. That kind of looks complicated, so I'm going to write it as a sum. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So now, since we're multiplying powers of uh, 2 here, 4 and 8 and 16, they're all powers of 2, all of these numbers actually can be written as powers of 2, so like this. And here, it's important not to simplify any of the exponents. Okay, so this one is going to stay as is. Now, since 4 is 2 squared, we can basically write this as 2 squared to the power 1 fourth. And this can be written as 2, third, two to the third to the power 1 eighth. This is 2 to the fourth power to the power 1 over 16, so on and so forth. Now, when you multiply, this is when I don't want you to simplify the exponents or the numbers. 2 times 1 fourth is going to be 2 fourths. This is going to be 2 to the power 3 eighths and then 2 to the power 4 16, so on and so forth. Again, it's tempting to simplify, but don't do it, because we want to be able to see the whole pattern. Now, since all the bases are 2's, we can go ahead and just add the exponents. 1 half plus 2 fourths plus 3 eighths plus 4 16, so on and so forth. Hopefully you get the idea. We can basically write the exponents as a series. So here's the exponent. And I'm going to go ahead and separate it. And then later on, whatever I find, it's going to be 2 to the power of that number. Okay? 1 half plus 2 fourths plus 3 eighths plus 4 sixteenths, so on and so forth. Notice that the numerators are positive integers, and the denominators are powers of 2. So it's kind of like we have an n in the numerator and 2 to the power n in the denominator. Of course, you can also write this as n equals 1 through infinity, and so on and so forth. Now, how do we handle such a series, such a sum? It's an infinite sum, but the denominator tells us, hey, this has to do with geometric series, right? Where we have the power of something multiplied by something else. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of break this down into different pieces. For example, if you started off with 1 half and then continue with 1 fourth and 1 eighth and 1 sixteenth, this would be geometric, right? And we're going to have an answer for this one. But then I do have two fourths. So 
that kind of requires adding another fourth to it. But then we have three eighths. That means you're going to add the eighth three times. So we can kind of line up uh, like this and, you know, just shift it over. And then this is going to be followed by 1 16th, 1 8th plus 1 16th. So notice that every time we're adding another uh, more uh, of the terms. So we're, gonna, we're not going to have a 1 8th here because we only need it three times. But we do need a 1 16th and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and take a look at each of these values that it converges to. And then we're going to try to add them. The first one, and if you kind of quickly remember how we do the geometric uh, series, if you have something like a plus a r plus a r squared plus a r cubed, and then dot dot dot, this can be written as a times 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed dot dot dot. As long as r is between negative 1 and 1, this is going to converge. We can write this as 1 over 1 minus r, or you can write it as a over 1 minus r where a represents the first term and r is the common ratio. So let's go take a look at both of these. First term for our first series is basically 1 half. It's going to be divided by 1 minus r. And r is basically the second term divided by the first term, which is 1 half again. So this is going to be 1 half divided by 1 minus 1 half, which can be written as 1 half divided by 1 half. Again, don't simplify it. Leave it like that because we're going to get a pattern for the sum of these series as well. So the second one is going to be 1 fourth divided by 1 half. The third one is going to be 1 eighth divided by 1 half. The last one is going to be, not the last, but, you know, the fourth one is going to be 1 sixteenth divided by 1 half. Okay, so this is going to continue, obviously, right? And we're just going to add all of these up because when, when we add these, we get 1 half plus 2 fourths plus 3 eighths plus 4 sixteenths, so on and so forth. So, our series can be written as follows. Let me rewrite it. This can be written as 1 half over 1 half plus 1 fourth over 1 half plus 1 eighth over 1 half, so on and so forth. Oops, I wrote 1 twelfth and then 1 16th over 1 half, so on and so forth. Notice that they all have the same denominator. That's why I kind of want to take that out or just add these uh, with a common denominator. It's going to be 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 16th dot 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 divided by 1 half. And this is just going to be, again, from geometric series, a1 or a divided by 1 minus one half, that is divided by one half. This is one half, this is one half, so that's one. So this is one over one half, which is two. So the answer is two, but guess what? That is just the exponent, right? So we do have two to the power of that, and that power happens to be two. So the answer is, for our expression, let's rewrite it, the original one. is just going to equal 2 to the power 2, which can be written as 4. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.